We live in a society where levels of suspicion and mistrust of strangers and others is as high as it ever has been, and there's good reason for that. We've been lied to so many times. It seems like every week on the news there's a story of someone we thought was this kind of person and who turned out to be that kind of person. Every day we get robocalls and phony emails that try to separate us from our money and our stuff and our identity. And after a while, this goes on and on, and, and, and we're just deeply suspicious. So it's no wonder that when we come up to people we barely know and, and say, let me tell you the good news about Jesus, they do this, or they roll their eyes. May I suggest to you that in a world where this is our darkness, that one of the best ways we can shine the light of Jesus and be that city on the hill is hospitality. A kind of gracious welcome that listens to people, that makes room for them, that sticks with them, that shows that you really care about them and that you will care about them over time. May I suggest to you that this is the best way or one of the best ways to shine the light of Jesus in our world today. That's essentially the whole thesis of that Art of Neighboring book that we gave to you. One of the central ideas of that book, one of the things they say, which I like, is they say when, when you're trying to reach people, it should be the great commandment before the great commission. The great commandment should come before the Great Commission in our world. The Great Commission is go into all the world and make disciples of all nations. The Great Commandment is love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. In our kind of world, with our kind of darkness, showing people that we really genuinely love them preside, provides the context for us to prevent the gospel of Jesus. Here's, in our society, providing context of hospitality, showing that we care, creating occasions where conversation can go from that surface level of news, weather, and sports to that deeper level of hopes and dreams and fears. I promise you, if you can create times like that, the conversation will move towards spiritual things. The conversation will move towards Jesus and you will be able to let your light shine. When I started out in ministry, my life intersected with a young man who was a good friend of another family at Woodlawn where I served. And they wanted me to talk to this young man because this young man was not a Christian, and they were hoping that I would have some winsome, clever words that would bring him to Jesus. So I said, yes, of course. And I had lunch with the guy, and we had a wonderful lunch. But truthfully, when I brought up the, the, the subject of faith, I got a stone wall. And what he said to me was, look, I'm not interested, man. I had a lot of friends who used to be addicted to drugs, and now they're addicted to Jesus, and I don't want to be an addict. I didn't have a good answer for that. A part of our lunch, I found out that he liked softball. And our slow pitch team really needed a couple more players. So I said, hey, why don't you join our team? You seem like a good guy. So he did. And he fit right in. We had a blast together. He played with us. He got invited out afterwards for beverages, which is slow pitch hospitality. <laughs> Many of you know about this hospitality. Me included. And he, he did that, you know, week after week. And it went on for one year and two years. And, and pretty soon... He started showing up in church. And not long after that, he started showing up in my office to ask some questions. And not long after that, he was standing up in front of everyone and making profession of faith. There it is again. Great commandment before great commission. Ordinary guys playing slow pitch, letting their light shine before others so that others may see their good deeds and give glory to their Father in heaven. The light is in you, people. You are his children. Let your light shine.